Only when we think we know everything about football, FIFA drops a ban that makes us scratch our heads in awe. I mean, why would you ban CR7 from celebrating his goals, Neymar from wearing his own shoes, or players from heading balls? Let's find out. No heading ball. A couple of years ago, the SPL introduced a controversial ban that left many people baffled. Glasgow University research found that former footballers were three and a half times more likely to die from brain disease. What? In response, the Scottish Football Association imposed a ban on professional footballers, prohibiting them from heading balls the day before and after matches. But that wasn't the end of it. Prior to this ban, there was already a restriction on headers in training for under-12 teams nationwide. It may seem like a what-the-hell-do type of thing to you, but it is what it is. Just like when CR7 was apprehended for celebrating his own goal. Controversial Goal Celebration We've always seen some of our favorite players making fabulous goals, taking off their shirts for the goal celebration, and then getting a yellow card. While very common, goal celebrations that involve shirt removal are banned in football and can result in a yellow card. I mean, we all remember the brilliant game, Manchester United versus Villarreal was, and the last minute goal of CR7. Ronaldo took his shirt off during the celebration and got a yellow eventually. The rationale behind this ban is player identification. The referee identifies all the players with the numbers and names. Taking the shirt off can confuse the referee. It becomes even more evident in international games where the referees don't know the players of remote countries and faces could look similar to them. Some people, however, say that the sponsors want the jerseys with their logos on the players so the audience can see them on screens. They pay insane sums just to showcase their brands, and taking off a shirt during goal celebrations can really ruin that marketing chance. And I think those some people have got a good point, just like I have a point to make in the next football ban. Bans for fans So far, we've seen quite a few controversial moves pulled by FIFA and IFAB, but a few months ago, they really took it up a notch, hitting the high notes with the 2022 World Cup. As the tournament drew near, the excitement was palpable. Well, why wouldn't it be? Qatar was gearing up for an influx of football fans from all corners of the globe, ready to cheer on their national teams. However, it seems like someone forgot to double check on what these fans were all about until the 11th hour. Qatar, with its strict alcohol policy, threw a major curveball, especially for fans from places like England, where a good time often involves a pint or two. Imagine the shock when they found out that their beloved beverages were literally banned. And while I tried my best to grasp the political and religious reasons behind it, it's still a bit of a puzzling, or should I add, controversial move, just like the next ban. Neymar's Fortnite Boots So, you know Neymar, right? The dude's big into gaming and even has his own Twitch channel. Well, to hype up some Fortnite thing, he swapped out his usual Puma Z boots for these crazy custom Fortnite kicks. But here's the header. Turns out they're a no-go, according to the new rules. Basically, there's this ban on boots with any political or religious messages or ads for different brands. So, as awesome as Neymar's new Fortnite boots were, he couldn't rock them anymore. It's like when someone asks you, how are you doing? And even if you're not fine, you gotta say you are. <laughs> Neymar's boots, though, at least weren't causing a crisis for a whole bunch of kangaroos. Beckham's Boot Revolution all right, so the year's 2007, and David Beckham made the move from Real Madrid to LA Galaxy. In the midst of all the excitement, things, quite unexpectedly, took a serious turn. The British animal welfare group Viva showed Beckham a video of kangaroos getting the short end of the stick. And get this, they're supposedly the same kangaroos used to make his Adidas boots. It hit him like a ton of bricks. Fast forward to when the California Supreme Court got wind of what was going on with Adidas and their kangaroo leather boots. The court was quick to drop the bomb and banned Adidas from selling any boots made from kangaroo leather. It was a big deal. And what did Beckham do? He didn't waste any time. He switched to the synthetic version, making a clear stand against using materials that caused harm to animals. It's like he said, nope, not on my watch, and made a quick pivot to a more ethical choice of synthetic leather. Something that Paul Mullen should have done. Mullen's political slogan. The key player for Wrexham AFC made headlines across the UK for his specially crafted boots and a chanting incident at McDonald's. 
The player shared an image of his customized footwear featuring an anti-conservative party slogan in October of 2022. Here's what was written on the boots. So the club was quick to impose a ban on striker Paul Mullen for sporting boots adorned with a political message. The message, which reads F the Tories, was edited out on the shared image and also issued a formal statement. Though they asserted the right to individual opinions, the club deemed Mullen's actions an unwelcome distraction, saying the players should focus on the game and team management should focus on making proper kits, otherwise they might get banned. Don't understand it? Wait for the next entry. Cameroon's disaster of a kit. So, back in the 2002 World Cup, teams were dropping their new jerseys, and everything was cool, until Cameroon entered the scene. They rolled out their take on the World Cup kit, and FIFA was like, What the hell? What on earth is this? FIFA wasn't vibing with Cameroon's bold choice and straight up asked them to swap those controversial kits before the World Cup kicked off. FIFA spokesperson Keith Cooper even called them vests instead of shirts. Talk about a shirt move gone wrong. But do you want to know about a band which is more controversial than this disaster kit? Wearing jewelry. Yes, apparently wearing jewelry in matches pose a threat to the players. It came as a surprise to many people when a match was stopped and France's World Cup round of 16 clashed with Poland because of a piece of jewelry that defender Jules Koundé was wearing in the match. The game was put on hold and the chain was removed from his neck in the first half of the game. It was at this point when many football fans came to know that players are not allowed to wear jewelry during matches for safety reasons. The ban is on such items as necklaces, bracelets, and earrings. I see some rationale behind this. Imagine a player wearing a chain goes up for a header, and the chain gets caught on an opponent's finger or jersey, leading to potential injuries. The chain must come out, but it's not the only thing that gets removed from your neck if you're a football player. Sometimes, a thing as simple as snood cannot be allowed to wear. Wearing snoods. Yes, according to the eighth president of FIFA, Joseph Sepp Blatter, snoods are dangerous and can hang somebody. What the hell? Now, even if I ignore all the legitimate, life-threatening, barbaric tackles allowed in football, I'm not sure how a neck warmer can hang somebody. A number of top players, including Carlos Tevez, Samir Nasri, David Silva, Mario Balotelli, Pepe Reina, Maro and Schmack have made a snood part of their uniform. All I wondered was what their thoughts were on the ban. Nonetheless, a ban's a ban, and you gotta respect it. Good thing is snoods or neck warmers were banned for a period, and now the ban is over. But you wanna know what one ban would be permanent? The next one. Shoes with hidden spikes. No one knew anything like this could have potentially happened, but the star players Wayne Rooney and David Beckham of the English football club Manchester United suffered repeated metatarsal injuries, reportedly from bladed football boots. Such injuries have the capacity to end the careers of players, and since then, many UK sporting bodies have criticized and banned the bladed football boots. Any kind of unusual equipment that may give the player an unfair advantage is prohibited to use in football. We knew this part, but we didn't know that unusual equipment meant shoes with hidden spikes that could end the career of football players. But what about something that can actually end their lives and careers? Mandatory shin guard rule. Playing without wearing a shin guard is banned in football, and this ban makes the most sense of all the bans I have told you. Recall the ban I mentioned earlier regarding bladed boots at Manchester United? Sir Alex Ferguson took swift action when he discovered the detrimental impact of these boots on his star player, Roy Keane. Despite Keane's formidable skills on the pitch, a serious injury resulting from a tackle kept him sidelined for two months. Upon receiving the scan results, Sir Alex was alarmed to find marks from bladed boots on Roy's shin. This revelation prompted an immediate ban on all forms of bladed boots at Manchester United. Just imagine the potential severity of the injury if Roy hadn't been wearing shin guards. So, we're not messing around with this rule. It's strictly a no-go. Safety first, always. Even after all these lesser known and controversial bans, that's still not it. I mean, do you know what the Ronaldo rule is? And what is the most anticipated two-point line coming in football? Click the video to know.